back to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we're going to learn how to make our text interact with our image. So have certain layers of the image in front of the text and certain parts behind. So let's get started with our text. I'm going to go over to the type tool over here and I'm going to click and I'm just going to write one letter at a time. So there's my first letter. It's going to be t text is what I'm going to spell. I'm going to click back on my background and then I'm going to go to my type tool again and click again put my E, then do the same thing, click, click, X, click, click, T. Okay, so the reason why I'm doing that is because I want the letters to feel like they are separate, like they've fallen onto the ground separately and not just as one perfect word of text. So I'm gonna go to my first T and I'm gonna go Control T to transform that layer. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit and I'm going to say about, I'm going to type in up here 120 and I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Just go to the corner and rotate it a bit and place it over there. Check. And then I'm going to do the same thing for each letter to kind of resize it and place it where I want it. So now that I have the text where I want it, I'm going to click on my first letter. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to click on my last letter and then I'm going to go control E to merge those all together. Then I'm going to go to my background layer and go control J to duplicate it, then drag it above my text layer. And then all I'm going to do is hold control. Well, I'm selected on this background copy. I'm going to hold control and click on my text layer. And you can see that it will make the selection of my letters. And then I'm going to go up to select at the top and I'm going to go select inverse. So now it's going to select everything else around and I'm going to click this mask button, the square rectangle here with the circle in it. Boom. And then my text is going to appear. And if we look at the mask, what it means is whatever's in white is what is still there and whatever is in black is what's been kind of cut out to reveal our text behind. And now all we have to do is zoom in and lower, click on our text layer, lower the opacity to about, you know, 40%, have it pretty low. Click back on our mask, not on the thumbnail, on the mask. Go to your brush and you're going to use a white brush because everything in here is black. We're going to use a white brush and that's going to paint areas back in. You want to use the appropriate size of brush. I would say hardness, keep it around 75 or so. And your size is going to vary depending on the type of image you have. I need mine to be fairly small because I have small leaves in here. And then all you're going to do with that brush is, let's look at the top here, you're just going to find leaves that you can see the full leaf overlapping with your text and you're just going to paint that in. Okay, so you're going to paint that in and don't worry about it being super perfect just yet. And you can see that there's the stem going there. So I would have to go and make it an even smaller brush, even smaller than that. We'll say there is probably fine. And then paint that in as well. Okay, so that's what you do for every single one. I'm gonna go back up to about 30. Now you're gonna find leaves like right here. We have these two that overlap nice right here. This one kind of sticks in right there. And you can just decide to do as many or as few as you want if you have an image like mine. And really the only two things you have to pay attention to is changing the size of your brush when you need it. So making it smaller when you have smaller areas that you need to paint in. And then if you make a mistake, like let's say you paint over here and you don't want that area painted, then you got to flip back down here to black in the front so that you can erase it and get rid of it again. Okay, so if I zoom out, that's what we have so far is those leaves all overlapping with our text. I maybe did too many right there, so I wouldn't have, I wouldn't do that for the whole letter, but in little patches like that, it would look good. And then just continue that for every single letter until you have painted in all the leaves that you want. So at this point, I'm just going to fast forward through until I have all of my leaves painted in.
think you have everything painted in that's going to be in front of your text, head over to your text layer and turn the opacity back up. And then at that point, you might see, like right here, I'll zoom in, I have um, my selection wasn't the greatest here. I still have some black on the outside here. So I would go back to my mask layer and make sure I'm on my black brush, zoom in and clean up some of those edges now that I can see them a little bit better because the text is more contrasty to my image. So go through and clean up all your edges. Then you have to decide what your text is going to look like. So I'm just going to do what I wanted to do with this one and then you can adjust from there. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to my text layer. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to blending options and I'm going to put a color overlay on it. And I was already in here messing around. So my color turned out pretty good, the one that I wanted. But if you want to change it, click on here. I started off by just kind of clicking around in my image to find something that was a little more vibrant. And then I kind of played off of that. So I think I might have clicked on that. And then I was like, ah, it doesn't kind of pop enough. So I just kind of slid this up a little bit to make it pop a little bit more. Then I am going to add a bevel and emboss. So again, when I click on it, I want to click not on this check mark. I'm going to click right on the word bevel and emboss. And you can see I've already kind of played around with it a little bit. So I chose an inner bevel. I thought that was the best look. Chisel soft. Uh, my depth, 63%. When it's too high up, then it was too much shadows that were being cast on it. So I liked it around that 63 mark. Whoops because it still pops. As far as size goes, I had mine up pretty high. I didn't really like the look when it was down lower like that. So just play around with what you think looks good for yours. And then I softened it up just a little bit. Down here, I didn't really change anything. I just left everything the exact same. I maybe cranked up opacity a little bit, but just look at these settings if you like that look and click OK. That's all we're going to do for the text. And then really the last thing is just to kind of enhance our depth by going up to this background layer, right click on it and go up to blending options again. And on this one, we're going to add the drop shadow. So again, click on the word drop shadow. And you can see that that's way too harsh right now. So we're just going to play around with some of these settings in here. So first of all, I like the spread to be right down. And I'm going to drop the size way down. And I'm going to make sure here that the since it looks like when I put the bevel and boss, it looks like the shadows are all on this side and the, the light would be coming from right to left. So I'm going to make sure that my angle for my shadows is going from right to left kind of as well. Maybe a little bit of a slant so it's coming from this direction. And really all we're looking at here, I'm going to drop this down even a little bit. And all we're looking at is the shadow that some of these leaves are casting. So I'm going to make it a little bit more blurry, kind of play around with those numbers. And we're going to see here. So if you want to see what it looks like before and after, just click your check here. So that's what it was before the drop shadow. And that's what it is after. So it just allows some of these leaves to cast a little bit of a shadow because they're on top of the text. So it makes it look a little more natural. So play around with your settings in here until you get something that you think looks good for your image and click OK. And that's it. That's how you make text interact with your image in Photoshop.